preheated pack with a decent temperature on it right there. Let's see how we fare on our first Tesla supercharge in an Ionic 5. Okay, so not a lot of light where I am, but welcome to the first test of the Tesla CCS charging, also known as Magic Dock. It's in the dark here because it only just went live tonight, so uh, we're going to get plugged in and see what we can do on the Tesla supercharger network. Let's go! Okay, here we are. Ballston Spa is one of the uh, precious few Tesla superchargers that has been retrofitted in the past week or two with the magic dock. So first quick thing to note, we're up just north of Albany, right here. A little further up, you've got Saratoga Springs. That's where one of the Evolve New York sites is. That's a shell recharge. And about 10 miles down the road here, Clifton Park, you also have another uh, Stuart Shops this is, but uh, this one is an Evolve New York as well. So we're kind of in the middle of two Evolve NY sites here and uh, we'll see what we get on this supercharger. So I have already set up a credit card. You have a charge your non-Tesla section, which is prominently displayed. This is now one of these select sites in New York State, eight in New York State, I guess, and a couple over here in California, but this is the one that we're interested in. And We'll select it. You see it's 49 cents a kilowatt hour and then dollar a minute idle fees, which is exactly what it should be. Okay, so there's your next screen. Undock adapter and plug in. Select your post number in the app and then tap unlock. So you can see we're on 2D, which we'll find in the app here. You can unlock CCS1 adapter. The lights just went out, which isn't terribly helpful. You could hear a unlock there, and there you have it. Quite neat, tough to pick out here. There we go with that. Plug in to start charging. Establishing connection may take up to two minutes. I heard the charge lock there. That was pretty quick. Unfortunately, all my lights just went out here, so... Let's see how this progresses. It had said charging started. I did hear that. I don't see anything on the car just yet. And charging failed. To start a new session, reinsert the handle with the adapter attached into the dock. Select a post, tap unlock adapter and plug in. Okay, we'll try again. That may have been me thinking about. Okay, let's try it again without the faffing about. So it knows immediately that I'm using one here. Charge here, I'm on 2D. Unlock CCS1 adapter, that's unlocked. Plug in to start charging. Charging unsuccessful. Charging unsuccessful. Huh. Okay, what do we think is going on there? Charging is complete according to the app. Summary unavailable. Okay, let's try one more. Unlock it. You heard it unlock. I'll give it some cable relief here. I heard it lock in. And I'll just keep it. So it did do that before. I can hear the
Okay, not quite what I was hoping for. Um, similar issue on all of these. So I have moved along the line here from the first one we started recording on at the end there, 2D. Uh, I did actually come to this end first to see if I could park sideways on 1A and uh, tried each one. Now, what's happening, as far as I can tell, is it makes the connection, it locks into place. We'll try it again here, just as a further proof, because who knows, maybe whilst I film it'll actually work. All correct, 1B. I don't have any problem unlocking it. it tells you to push up and pull down. No problem, out it comes. So releasing isn't the issue. Plug in, I'm gonna give it that relief again. It gets to the charging started screen. Uh, sorry, message. You can hear it lock in. Charging will start. And I even get to the first screen on the Tesla app saying something like 18 to 21 kilowatts. It starts to fire up. I hear something working on the unit. Then it will blank out. You hear the unlock. That goes out. And that's dead. And it will give me the charging failed. So I'm not sure if it's the site. It looks like we had an F-150 Lightning charging here earlier, so uh, might just be the car. Maybe the EGMP platform, maybe something else. Looks like people have charged Bolts, Rivians, F-150 Lightning, uh, but for our case, not, uh, not any joy at the moment, unfortunately. Okay, so jumping to the daytime for some better light here. Um, obviously not uh, a great test from our perspective, being able to uh, get a charge and see some of the underlying data for an 800 volt car in Talk Pro would have been good. But, you know, informative to see the neat installation of the Magic Dog, how it's fairly easy to unlatch and get into the, um, the charge spot, at least for our car. Bolts haven't had a problem, it's been okay on the uh, GV60, EV6, those kind of things. So other than the Ionic 5 seeming to have a little bit of a uh, disconnect with the charging system, the Tesla Supercharger Magic Dock solution seems to work very well for the majority of models here. As far as pricing goes, um, it's fairly competitive really. You've got uh, Electrify America's prices going up here pretty soon in the next few days. And at 49 cents a kilowatt hour, obviously that's on the higher side of non-member pricing, but it's going to be in line with a lot of things and then you can get on the plan which is $12.99 a month for Tesla members and you'll reduce that right down to $0.39 cents a kilowatt hour which is right in line with a lot of the providers certainly in that area. After tax Evolve New York is around uh, $0.38 cents per kilowatt hour and there's a bunch that are going in along the throughway uh, which are a handy position no doubt you know being able to not have to leave the interstate system but uh, those are going to be anywhere between 46 to 56 uh, cents per kilowatt hour so tesla's pricing is right in line with the current price for dc fast charging so it could be a good thing for members uh, ourselves we don't use it as a primary network not just because of the issue with the ionic 5 which i assume will get resolved at some point pretty soon but because we have the free charging plan with electrify america and as i've covered many times on this channel we just don't hit the problems that uh, a lot of people seem to do you know there's it's obviously not the most consistent network there are issues with different uh, types of hardware congestion uh, stations being offline that certainly happens no one's denying that but on our travels in general we're always able to get a charge we're able to use the free plan the majority of the time um, and it works for us so you know we will continue to be using that plus we have um, stuff like EVgo which I did use on the trip over to the uh, Malta supercharger and uh, that worked really well they're starting to get newer hardware in those delta units uh, work very well with auto charge plus so it's a really seamless startup and on a preconditioned pack we were getting some of the best charging speeds we've seen so in combination of the electrify america preference because of the plan and the uh, increasing presence of evgo and other providers along that new york thruway route 
Uh, Tesla will just end up being a backup to our backups probably. But not to say that it isn't a very welcome addition. It's nice to see this going in. And obviously the potential is really what most people are excited about here. It's not that Tesla has opened up the entire supercharging network because we're talking about 10 sites at the moment, but it does have that supercharger network that it has the potential to open up if everything goes well with this pilot. So uh, the 10 sites could quite easily become 100, uh, 1000, and it starts to really rack up the places and quickly they could become the biggest uh, public charging network at least for CCS and Tesla vehicles in the United States. Um, the biggest one would be cable length initially. Uh, there are supposed to be longer cables potentially on version 4 superchargers, but knowing what we've got at the moment is version 3. Um, so it seems like in some cases the cord is going to be stretched uh, to get to a F-150 Lightning, for example, as you'd see in Tom Malogny's video. That could lead to people who are not as thoughtful as him, kind of stretching the cables out, potentially putting more wear and tear. Remember, Tesla's used to um, fixing these things based on Tesla usage, so they're always in the same place, the port is optimized for the uh, distance of the cable, and they're never really going to be super stressed. If uh, CCS drivers are starting to monkey around with them, try and stretch them in weird directions, uh, you could see a little more cable wear and tear, and that could be a, an issue that Tesla has to start a addressing in terms of maintenance and repair. And obviously that's not going to go down that well with uh, Tesla drivers if their cords are suddenly finding that they're uh, less reliable because other CCS users are starting to come in. CCS is also one of the reasons that it could start to uh, break. It adds a point of potential failure uh, with that magic dock. We'll see how robust they are. Um, trying it myself, it did feel you know slightly loose and flexible within the uh, magic dock holster. Remember, it's just really an adapter, right? So much as you hook a CCS adapter onto the CCS connector for the Tesla and slide that in, that's a big chunky unit, obviously, but still uh, you know a point of failure. So could the magic dock be? So you know if those start to get bumped about, drop down, uh, that could start to become a point of failure as well. And then as we've touched on, the way these. Uh, Sites are kind of set up, they're not necessarily uh, great at the moment for big vehicles, vehicles that require that uh, charge port to be in a certain place. So you're going to have to know where your charge port is located as you pull in and maybe have looked at the site beforehand. There's only 10 of them so far, so you probably have a good idea where you want to charge. Uh, the end units seem to be the best bet at the moment, obviously, because those overlap with a parking space, which is just general use. So if you can back into that end side unit as we did, uh, should be able to reach the port easily and you're not overlapping with another supercharger that would disrupt uh, Tesla usage. Obviously stick to the uh, individual ones if you can. If you look at the photos from Fredonia, there's one lonely uh, stall over on the right hand side as you look at the chargers. That would be the one for most uh, CCS users to go to first and foremost, especially if you have a big truck like an F-150 Lightning. And all the usual things of, uh, you know, don't charge past 80 percent if you can help it look at when understand learn to use them uh, where your charging slows uh, try and be gracious and move on at that point much as you would with any other charger so in most cases other than the spacing and the port issue it's just going to be a case of usual ev etiquette So have you been able to get to a Tesla supercharger and charge your model? What was it? Did you find it easy to park and use the right stall? Any friction with current Tesla owners based on uh, starting to use their equipment? So we have owners of uh, so many different models at this point watching the channel that it's going to be interesting to see how everyone's using it, which site they used and what they'd hope to see in future. So if you're in a different area where you haven't been able to use a Tesla supercharger with this magic dock yet, do you have one near you? What site would you like to see retrofitted? And how quickly do you think they'll uh, push this expansion now that it seems to be up and running and working well? Let us know down in the comments. Thanks for watching as always and talk to you in the next one. Cheers.